The Rochester Epidemiology Project is unique, especially because of this historical uh, capability. We go back to 1966, which makes it almost 50 years in a row, and we can look at uh, big chunks of histories of people's life, and, uh, and that's very important. Another uh, use of the RAP is that we can look at risk and protective factors. So for example, we can see people that have developed a certain cancer and check whether they had certain diet, they had certain medical or surgical events, they were consuming certain substances, like they were drinking coffee, they were drinking uh, alcohol, they were smoking, they were having all kinds of uh, life situation. And we can look at occupation, education, a number of social uh, factors as well as medical. So it's extremely valuable to be able to answer medical questions um, that have to do with prevention, <clears throat> with better care, and also with uh, understanding the cost and the effectiveness of our intervention. Because in medicine, many things that we do are predicated on the hope that they are useful, but it's important to continuously monitor whether they are really useful and that they are cost effective. Is the money well spent when we spend money to do something for a person that is ill? And that can be done by observing what happens uh, over time to these people. I think that the Rochester Epidemiology Project has contributed quite dramatically, uh, especially in terms of testing certain uh, procedures or, or medications or interventions to see, for example, whether they are dangerous, risky, or they are uh, convenient. Just to give you an example, a few years ago, there was a big controversy on whether having a breast implant uh, after removal of a, of a breast because of cancer, it was potentially uh, a negative uh, intervention, it had a negative effect. And we were able to show, uh, using our data, that indeed it was not uh, uh, dangerous. and the women that did have the implant were not doing any worse than without. So that's an example of changing medical practices. So there's a continuous a, a series of examples where people at the Mayo Clinic or people from outside of the Mayo Clinic using the Registered Epidemiology Project are able to test hypotheses uh, and then produce scientific papers. And then this, of course, uh, when it's confirmed, may actually change the way medicine is practiced anywhere, not just in Oxford County. So very, very uh, uh, important role. The studies done in Northern County have been sometimes criticized because of the fact that we tend to be uh, ethnically less diverse than if you had done a study in New York or San Diego or Miami. Uh, and that is, of course, correct. Uh, the majority of the population in Minnesota has been historically of uh, European descent. However, uh, one thing that is happening is that we have now a, a fair amount of uh, immigration. We have had a fair amount of immigration so that in Northland County, if we look at children or uh, people in below age 20 in school, 25% uh, or one in four kids are not of European descent. So the community is changing, is changing rapidly. And uh, of course, this affects for now the younger population. We will have to wait 20, 30 years for those people to become middle-aged and then elderly. But uh, it's changing. One of the limitations of the Rochester Epidemiology Project, if there is a limitation, is that it covers approximately 150,000 people. As of today, about 150,000 people live in Oxford County, and we have 95% of them. So good coverage of the population. If you look at the full 50 years of the, of the history, then we have about half a million people that were ever at some point in the system. However, for certain studies, this population is still small. If you want, for example, to study um, pediatric population or very elderly people, and you want to study maybe men and women differently or boys and girls differently, then the groups get smaller and smaller. In order to uh, be able to study this uh, specific segment and rare diseases, we are now proposing to go to the eight county region of southeastern Minnesota. This is the little corner that you see on the map between the Mississippi River and the Iowa border. And if we can succeed uh, in the next uh, three, four years to put it all together, the population covered will go up from 150,000 to about 360,000 people active and alive, which would make us, again, even a more valuable resource for the country and for, for everybody. Uh, so we are very excited and we are uh, moving uh, very well with the plan. As of January 2013, 
we will start bringing in many, many uh, centers of medical care that are associated with Mayo Clinic. It's called the Mayo Clinic Health System. And we already have the satellites connected with Oxford Medical Center. So we should, in the next two, three years, uh, obtain a very high coverage of the full region.